So we need to hear that. That is the number one thing we need to hear. Once we hear that living act of word, and I shared previously how for me that's what radically changed my life, is I heard something about the righteousness of God and that made me come alive. And that life was used to change the way I felt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, the Bible says that our spirit is alive because of righteousness. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to today's Light in the Darkness episode. We have our guest, Ty Edgar, who's a clinical psychologist and has been with us for a past few episodes. It's been amazing. Um, But before we get into it, I want to thank you for watching wherever you're watching from all around the world. It is an honor and privilege to be having you join us here. Uh, Maybe it's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever you're watching, comment below, put up your flag, let us know which country, maybe put up the flag emoji. Um, And if today blesses you, would you just let us know, comment right in, as well as share, consider sharing. A simple share can change a life. So many people have had our light in the darkness devotions shared with them or sent to them and have become you know following it and being blessed by it so we want to thank you for letting us be a part of your lives on a daily basis and so it's exciting again today to be with you Ty, we just want to say thank you for being on Light in the Darkness with us and unpacking Mm. all these different topics around emotions and worry and anxiety I think and believe it's really blessing so many people out there that are watching thank you thank Um, you for having me I think what you guys are doing is so important thanks Mm. Ty and also, there's a topic that you mentioned to us. Yes. It's light versus life. Yes. yes. Explain right? that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's a really important concept because, you know, psychology can give us light on emotions, for instance, or on difficulties that we go through, right? But it can't give us the life that Christ can give us. And for okay. me, that's the significant difference between the two. There's so many theologies and ideas and, and psychologies out there that we can try and grasp and use to understand moments and get some light on things we're going through. So by light, mm-hmm. you're kind of talking about knowledge. Yes. Let me, so like let me light say being that, like, yeah. like knowledge. Knowledge, correct. Mm-hmm. Like for example, okay. we have knowledge about the coronavirus, for instance. Yes. But do we have the life to, to change it? No. Yes. no. But we know who does. Mm. And, and that's the important part here is that we as Christians are connected to not only the light, but the life to okay. make a difference in our emotional worlds and in the mm. world around us. And I love the scripture in John 1 verses 4, which actually mm. says, in him being Jesus was life and the life was the light of men. Hmm. And I think that's really important mm. that we realize that we can encounter God's life in His Word. His Amen. Word is alive. Amen. And His Word is so alive that it can start to create change in us. Yeah. Mm. Where so often I find in the psychology world, we can maybe bring light to a person's emotional difficulty, but we can't do anything to change it. Yeah. Mm. They need some, something else. They need some other vitalization or some life to get in them to make a change. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't have that life in you, you just, it just, it's just a noise, really. It just doesn't make sense. So does that kind of clarify? Yeah, yeah I think it's interesting because um, you, uh, as a practicing clinical psychologist, yeah. you, you're practicing, people consult you, people come to see you. Um, you're exposed to a lot of people facing difficulties mm-hmm. and are expected to facilitate them dealing with those to challenges. To create life. Yeah. Yeah, you specialize in, in working with people with high levels of distress disorders. Right. Mm-hmm. Anxiety, um, depression. Anxiety, depression. Yeah. So, I mean, people come to you in pretty perplexing yes. spaces mm-hmm. and going through quite a bit of mental um, challenges mm-hmm. around how to, how to, you know, even even like being actually kind of like now, right now around the world, there's lockdowns and there's restrictions. But yes. sometimes when someone is restricted in their mind, it restricts their body too. So yeah. if you have a restriction in your mind, if, yes. you're, if you're struggling with uh, depression, it can be debilitating. You yes. can literally not function. Yes. So, so it's interesting because you could read all the books, all the right. studies, but really the reason why people would come see you is to get out of what they're facing. Yes. To change their lives, not just to get light, mm. but to change their life. Hmm. And I think that that's really important distinguishing marker is what makes what we believe completely different to anything else out there. So speak into life here. Yeah. Let's transition someone from yeah. knowing yeah. about a challenge right. 
into dealing with something. Yeah. So, so for, for instance, um, you know, when we talk about getting life activated in our lives, we talk about getting the real word of God, hearing the word of God. We know that the Bible says the word of God is alive. So we need to hear that. That is the number one thing we need to hear. Once we hear that living act of word, and I shared previously how for me that's what radically changed my life, is I heard something about the righteousness of God and that made me come alive. And that life was used to change the way I felt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. The Bible says that our spirit is alive because of righteousness. In other words, when you get a revelation of how righteous you are, your spirit comes alive. And that life is able to change scenarios around you instantly, Powerful. immediately. That's what often we refer to as the anointing, really. Mm. So, so when you speak about righteousness, yeah. let's take someone here who doesn't know much about yes. Christianity. Yeah. What you're speaking about is the identity Christ yes. purchased for you in right standing with God. Mm -hmm. So people often take an identity like I am, I have this weakness, I have this challenge, I have this personality mm -hmm. dysfunction, or I tend to be greedy, I tend to be selfish, I tend to be uh, angry, or I tend to be, um, I've heard people say, I tend to self-destruct. Yes. I break anything good, I destroy it. It's a yeah. good relationship, I tend to destroy it. It's a good job, I tend to destroy it. Mm -hmm. So they take an identity as flawed, based on their behavior. In Christianity, we take Christ comes to earth, walks a perfect life, fulfills 300 plus prophecies in chronological order about what the Messiah would do to redeem humanity into a righteous standing with God as in seen as perfect, not seen as your imperfections, but seen as what Jesus made you, right? So you spoke about that being a light yes. life, moment yes. not just knowledge but powerful knowledge speak into that a little bit if you yeah. can you know? so so again like you know i, I mean i can't really add to, to what that, you're saying yes, yes. Is, is jesus if we identify with who jesus is then we identify with the life that he brings and when yeah. we identify with that it does something to our spirits and that illuminates our mind changes our will and emotions yeah. there's actually a tv show that's really impacted tara and myself you can only get it on their app or on their websites called The Chosen. Yes. Uh, I, I really Very cannot good. stress how amazing this series is about the life of Jesus. And it's called The Chosen, and you go to the app on the app stores mm -hmm. or on their website, The Chosen, I think it is .tv, mm -hmm. but it's a phenomenal yeah. show about yeah. Jesus. But it culminates in this end episode where this woman at the well who comes to get water naturally meets Jesus as Messiah. Mm -hmm. In other words, he reveals himself to mm -hmm. her as the savior, mm -hmm. not just as a good man, yeah. but a good man who's yeah. come to do something for her. Yeah. But he lets her know he knows about her brokenness. He knows actually in detail what's gone wrong in her he has life. has the light on her. So there's light yeah. in the moment, yeah. but, but yeah. she's like, well, what would you want with me? You're telling me what's wrong with me isn't helping me. Yeah. She says, only, only the Messiah could do something. And he says, yes, that's me. Yes. And so the shift is, what is the life in the moment is to actually take from Jesus exactly. what you need. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus hangs on a cross between two thieves. And one yes. says, you're nothing. And the other one says, you're the Messiah. And the response to the one that says, you're the Messiah is, today you're saved. I in other words, I've dealt, I've, yes. I've, I've done something about yes. this moment. So... I think one of the difficulties in being a clinical psychologist or in psychology is your, probably your desire is to actually help people out of, mm -hmm. but that does require a shift in your thinking. Yes. Mm -hmm. So one of the things Tara was talking about that you jumped on when we were just in between recording was the power of thanksgiving. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the last thing you want to do when you're in a difficult moment is be grateful. Yes. Give yeah. thanks. And I heard you say you need to hear the word. But how often do we read in silence? Mm. I think sometimes it's good to read scripture yes. aloud. Yes. Yeah. To, to hear it spoken, yeah. even if it's you speaking it, yes. you hear it and it starts to resonate in your mind. But Thanksgiving, I think, has a very powerful, very yeah. powerful place in this because I think humanity yeah. likes to give thanks for what it gets. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so we often wait for something to change in order to be grateful. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and yes. I don't know about you, but 
I feel like it is a supernatural truth. Mm. It is a spiritual truth mm. to enter into thanksgiving mm. prior to mm. seeing it manifest. Absolutely. So maybe talk a bit about thanksgiving in this oh, I think it's such an important point. I mean, you know, you think about it that thanksgiving, really what you're talking about there is you've been thankful for the life and, and for what you have. So there, there's mm. life in that process, mm. right? Whereas, you know, I think a lot of the time people replace their worries and their, their responses to emotions with a lot of moaning and complaining. Yeah. And that's speaking, I suppose, it's speaking death in that moment, right? Yeah. And what, when, you, when you get thankful, you start to speak life into that yes. instance. Now, I want to preface that with a little bit of pointing out a lot of the time when, when Christians are feeling emotional, the, the first thing they say is, People come to them and say, speak life, speak life. Yes. Okay. But if we actually look at that scripture where it says, you know, it's call those things that are not as though they are. Mm -hmm. Just before it says that, it says, you know, we need to be quickened by the word. We need to be made alive by mm -hmm. the word. And thanksgiving brings us, makes us feel alive. Yeah. Then it's easier to start speaking life into a situation. Yeah. So I, I totally agree. So you say like actually receiving the word of God, in other yeah. words, letting that be spoken over you. Tara and I listen to um, teaching and preaching, uh, worship, yes. letting that kind of be around you or reading or, or meditating on scripture first yes. is key in facilitating an environment Correct. that brings forward yeah. that, yes. that, that response, that thanksgiving, that thanksgiving, that speak what you want to see. Then you speak, yes. yes. Wow. It's first that revelation of, I think we got that scripture. I mean, I think it's in 2 Corinthians. Maybe we can just have a look at it mm, quickly. Mm, pull it up um, on the, we have a screen here, everybody. We don't know the scriptures off by heart, the whole Bible. So we, we're going to look at it. Yeah, there it is. Go to, awesome. go to the next one. Sorry, next scripture. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. You can see there. This is actually Romans. Romans, so, sorry. Yes. Sorry, I got that wrong. Romans 4, 17. <laughs> It's a good thing you're a clinical a psychologist and not a pastor. Not a pastor. Hmm. Forgive me. We never give me, make mistakes. Give me some grace. You know, but, yeah. Yeah, true. So, <laughs> Romans 4.17 says that in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead. So first we see being in the presence of God. Then we see who gives life. That's, that's the life. And then we see cause those things which do not exist as though they So let's, let's just talk about this quickly. First and foremost, people are scared to enter the presence of God because they yeah. feel that when you enter the presence of God, if you are not perfect, you're rejected. Yes. Like God has this club for the people who are religious and yes. perfect. And then when you enter his presence, he's like, who's at the door? Have you done enough? Yeah. You're not allowed in. Yeah. But actually, no, that's not the context of the presence of God is for all. Come to me, all who are weary. It's for all, everyone to mm. come to that. As a sinner, you come. With thanksgiving. Yeah, you yeah. come to the throne of grace, With thanksgiving. right? Yeah. And the whole idea is in a time of need yes. to obtain exactly. mercy, right? So it's the presence of God. And he gives life to the dead. So interesting that you can come dead. Well, you, you can know, come. You can come emotionally. You can, you can be as depressed and down and out as you imagine. But you can come to him and receive life. And then suddenly you can speak life. I think a lot of the times we put the, we've the almost speaking. reversed this verse yes. where we're like, don't be depressed, speak life. No, no, no. first receive life. Yeah. then you can speak life yeah. and then things change. Yeah. It's so true. I Very think good. something that has often changed my atmosphere, I, I can't, like, if I feel in a certain space emotionally and I try to speak to that out of my own strength, yes. it's awful. Yes. But if I get ministry, yes. uh, if, even if I, I don't know how often you might mm -hmm. feel like when you want to just take a moment of worship or listen to teaching or preaching or that's why church is so important in this time. That's why not just like kind of skimming through social media and news, literally joining a church service, letting the word be spoken of you, letting the, the mm. even if you don't feel like worshiping, let others worship and draw you yes. in. Because on the other side of the ministry comes that response out of him, out of that revelation yes. that actually, you know, this is where I stand. So around the subject of Thanksgiving, Tara and I were talking the other day, just around people emphasizing, like we all having challenges. And it's not to say that they're not big challenges. Yes. But often I think we don't recognize the good things going on in yeah. our life. Mm -hmm. You know, our children are so busy and we can often like be like, oh my goodness, this is hectic. You know, three kids under nine, three dogs in our house, two, it's like six puppies. Um, in our home, but actually like that's the negative side, but the Thanksgiving is thank the Lord for our awesome kids. Thank mm. the Lord for this opportunity, another day, another breath, mm. another, a, another moment that we can actually bring to God. So it is such a powerful truth shifting into a Thanksgiving yes. space. 
And I think I want to emphasize there, when, when a person's in a deep depression, it's extremely hard for them to just switch into Thanksgiving mode. Yeah. It's kind of like saying, stop worrying. You know, it's very hard at yeah. times. Yeah. And that's why we need to preface it with first receive, as you're yes. saying. Then you start to, you, it's almost like you cultivate that ground to be able to start to produce a Thanksgiving heart. Because mm-hmm. I think so many times when people hear this, they hear us saying, listen, just suck it up and start getting thankful instead of being so down and out. And I think that that's a misconception. That's not even what we're saying here today. What we're saying is when you're down and out, go and receive from something that's alive. You know, if you just stand in a worship service, Mm -hmm. you will feel the life around you. Something will start to happen around you. Okay. Then you start to develop and it takes time. I think, again, people who are very emotional put demand on themselves. I must instantly feel the life. Otherwise, I'm not, you know, I'm not being thankful enough. And then they get into this condemnation cycle. So often you just rock up. You know, I love the way it says it in Matthew 6, 6 in the message version. It says, here's all I want you to do. Just come and sit in front of me and wait and you will start to experience the grace. Wow. Uh, and I love that advice that Jesus literally says, he has my advice to you. Mm-hmm. Just sit there and wait and experience the grace. And I think that's a starting point yeah. for a lot of down and out depressed people. So I think shift the atmosphere around you. Yes. Shift what you are. If it's thankful around you. To, yes. Then it'll so get like, in you. Even yeah. as our, in our church, we've got worship playlists. We've yeah. got worship that's yeah. on our YouTube channels and stuff. It's free. Just let worship, let let the word, let people speaking God's truth over you pull you out of something. Let let it actually minister to you. Don't try and make it happen for yourself. Place yourself in the presence of God and receive his ministry. One thing is required, isn't it? That's what Jesus said to Martha. One thing's required. Just sit there for a while. Depressed people sometimes just need to sit. Anxious people, sit. Guilty. Fearful, whatever it is, just sit for a while in an atmosphere of thankfulness, in an atmosphere of life. Mm-hmm. Yes. And things will change. What do, do, what do people do when they feel strong emotion? They close the curtains, they sit in bed. The atmosphere is... They, like, di- yeah, they kind yeah. of disconnect. From- they disconnect. It's dark. There's no light. Get into the light and then you yeah, start to feel so his good. life. And things move, then things change. And, and thankfulness and gratitude just flow out of that. It comes mm-hmm. out of that. Because it's now you're fruit. reminded of the sacrifice yes. of Jesus. Yes. You're reminded of what Jesus died to give yes. you. It's like we have so much yes. to thank mm. him yes. for. And it doesn't mean life is perfect. Mm. It doesn't mean our circumstances have even changed yet. Yes. yes. But out of yeah. that receiving and sitting yeah. at his feet, gratitude is just like a yeah. natural response, it, it's right? An, it's a fruit. It is a fruit. It's a fruit. Yeah. And it gets in you and then hope gets in you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then we start to see you looking at your future differently and things change. And it's it's amazing how it also has a ripple effect. Exactly. Like you actually just find yourself not being able to stop thanking the Lord and Mm. being grateful for what you do have and what he has done. And it actually rubs off on people around you. That's it. Thankful for your husband. That's the life. For Singing your- in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Thankful for your husbands. Thankful for your husbands in lockdown. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, apparently, I, I chew very loud. And um, that, in, that in lockdown is going to be very interesting yeah. as a concept. So, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be grateful. I'm Rain grateful that Jesus. my wife has such good hearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> grace is sufficient. Mm. I like getting Jesus. involved in this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Not, we're going to talk I'm about conflict. In our next episode, yeah. we're going to talk Sounds about good. dealing with conflict. We need, we need to. Hallelujah. Conflict in relationships, yeah. conflict in daily life. Let's receive communion together right now. If Ty, you can. Will you take, will you yep. lead us in lead communion? communion yes. sure. so wherever you are right now blessing. at home. Sure. Grab um, some bread, a wafer, a cracker, something to represent the body of Christ, Mm. some juice, some liquid, even some water to represent the blood of Jesus. In this moment, so powerful. We can really just come to the Lord and sit and just place ourselves with our need at His feet to receive His work at the cross. I think what's what's important to realize is this is life. When we partake of this, this is not just light. This is life that we are partaking of. Amen. And, and And I'm... I love that Matthew 6, 6, find a quiet place, a secluded place, so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just, just be there simply and honestly as you can imagine mm. with your communion. Mm. Yes. And just 
remember that this bread represents the life that Jesus has given us. Mm. And when we break and partake of this, we are partaking not only of the light it gives us, yes. but the life that can change mm. any Amen. emotional situation. Living bread. Amen. It's living bread. Repeat after me as I say this. Father, we thank you. Father, Father we, we thank, thank you. For the life of Jesus. For the life, life of, of Jesus. Jesus. The life that was broken for me. The, the life, life that was broken, broken for me. So that anything dead in me. So that anything dead in me. Would be brought back to life. Would be brought, brought back, back to life. life. Whether it's depression. Whether it's depression. Whether it's anxiety. Anxiety. Whether it's fear. Fear. We thank you that the life of Jesus. Mm. Life of changes. Changes. Our life. Our life. For the better, Father. For the better. So let's break this bread and partake of his life together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Healing from every disease in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Let's just repeat this after me. Yes. Father, we thank you for this blood. Thank you Father, for this blood. That represents total and complete forgiveness. It represents total and complete, and complete forgiveness. forgiveness. It represents an eternal life. It represents it's eternal, eternal life. life. That is bought and paid for. That is it was bought and paid for. And when we partake of this blood, when we partake of this blood I receive life to me. I receive life, life to me. And wholeness in, and Jesus, wholeness. Name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Partake. Tyler, that was Amen. awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so thank much you so to every much. single person that has been joining us. Mm. Comment below. Let us know where you're watching. Share this episode with people that have blessed, uh, if it's blessed you, and yeah. let it be a blessing to others. Um, a simple share can change a life. <laughs> Until our next episode here on Lights in the yeah. Darkness, thank Amen. you so much for being with us. Everybody, we'll see you again soon. Be blessed. <laughs>